we can take some questions from the floor first to see whether there are any questions from the floor. Okay, so maybe you are thinking about your question. I, I actually have a question for Marcus. So you mentioned your smart contract uh, for smart payment. I see that everything is done. Okay, so you, you link up the progress and then generate the invoice, all these things. But it seems to me the client or the users are not a little bit lukewarm. So uh, are there any reasons? So the yeah, clients in, the, in Germany. So uh, uh, first of all, mm -hmm. um, so we discuss this with, with clients and they think, okay, this, this system is quite nice. Mm -hmm. It's coming, it's now it's coming about the business model and the cost. So in, in general, there must be someone, of mm -hmm. course, maybe you can go on the public blockchain. We started with Ethereum. I think the transaction costs nowadays for one transaction in our size, it's, it's quite high. I don't know, maybe $20, maybe something like this at the moment. It's really costly to use uh, something like Ethereum at the moment for, for uh, this transaction. Of course, you can then maybe think about other uh, blockchains. And then it's always, always about personal data you want to store or not. Of course, we avoided this. There's no personal data at all. However, um, it's still the problem who is running this blockchain and uh, who is managing and what, what are the costs and where is really the business model. And yeah, this is yeah. the main reason at the moment. Okay. All uh, reasonable uh, concerns. Perhaps we are talking about collaboration. Yeah. Perhaps that's... Uh, the point that we can collaborate because you remember I, I received a call from a project manager who is uh, really pushing forward this concept. Yeah. Maybe we can talk more. Maybe, okay. yes. Hopefully, the <laughs> Hopefully, client here yes. is more open minded. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> question. Uh, actually, I have a question. So, um, you know, the, the coffee <coughs> break is coming, so I won't waste much time. So, a uh, simple question for, for uh, the other uh, speakers. So, as Professor Wilson mentioned about the AI in blockchain, so may I have your expertise of how the AI, especially generative design, AI, can empower the blockchain? Thank you. I don't know who wants to start. So, of course, uh, AI and blockchain. So, so of course, for AI, you need uh, some kind of training data. So it's, it's, it's for sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Of course, you, uh, there are several possibilities. Uh, so uh, maybe you can learn uh, based on the transaction. So it's a little bit like uh, that you are learning the processes going on. Where's the delay when they are doing something? Maybe you have this example. I think the logistic example is always very good because I think there's working uh, also, blockchain is working very well, but you can also analyze, for example, only the transaction data and get some more insight into the process. This is one possibility really directly to apply to uh, AI to that. Otherwise, of course, um, you can talk about this, um, is this image or this document really uh, the original one? So because you generate something maybe with the AI and then you compare it with the real one or something like this, it's also possible. So there are so many applications. You have always to think about what you want to do with AI. It's the same with the blockchain. Not, you cannot solve every problem with AI. I think uh, AI could be used when it comes to linking of different contract clauses. So say a particular contract clause uh, refers to another contract clause. So there are there is something like delay damages or price variation or liquidated damages. So AI could be used uh, to to you know link all of them with each other in the smart contract, and uh, you know, and then the data gets recorded on the blockchain. Uh, so that could be one of the applications. So I mentioned the AI and the blockchain. It's not AI. For blockchain applications, is not my mean. I, I went to the two cases uh, actually have been uh, interpreted by Marcus and, uh, nicely well already. So one of the things they used AI to ensure the uh, originality of the uh, the data. Another is uh, uh, to use AI to analyze the data. For example, for my project, I have collected more than twenty thousand photos with all the ten stamps, marks, uh, uh, inspections. That is actually a big data to be mined. 
So I'm actually working on that. that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I actually have a question. Oh, uh, there's another one. All oh, right. right. Okay. Sunny. Yeah. Hi, um, Sunny from uh, Cambridge Judge Business School. First question is actually uh, uh, directed to uh, Dennis. Um, great presentation. Um, I will, could you elaborate a little bit more on the last few slides when you're seeing that some challenge that you experienced, especially um, one th website you're talking about building X. Is that like a developer pool that you guys kind of try to curate so that you could get a critical mass of develop developer? Um, and what are the strategy to kind of promote this community of developing DAP? Um, so I would like to hear from you on that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so um, the the so we have a pool delegate with Maple Finance. So Maple Finance have already issued. They have the infrastructure to issue. Uh, loans on the blockchain. They've settled uh, 2.8 billion worth of loans already on the blockchain. They already have the in infrastructure and the customers. Now they're interested to branching out in construction. Uh, now they would prefer to have someone like BuildX Blockchain uh, run a pool delegate on Maple Finance. And Maple Finance have also said that they will provide the finance in that pool delegate. So we don't actually have to um, get the finance ourselves. So they'll provide, they'll, they'll fund the pool. Uh, Maple Finance have many pools. Uh, one of them, they've opened up a new pool for construction and they'll provide the finance for that pool and they already have the infrastructure. So essentially what Maple said is that, you know, we have the infrastructure, you want to provide finance or decentralized PBAs, we can leverage your infrastructure as much as possible. Maple works closely with Credo. Credo specialized in MPC wallets. Um, one issue we brought up was that we need the, the correct insurance in place. Um, Credo said, okay, well, we'll sort that out. And now they provide up to 600 million in insurance coverage for any funds lost or stolen through the application. So it's really just leveraging what Maple already have and what Credo already have and uh, creating a pool delegate on Maple for construction finance and for decentralized PBAs. Oh, thank you very much. Actually, uh, I still hold to the mic because uh, I do love a lot of your discussion like Marcus and Wilson as well as uh, uh, Prova. Uh, one most important thing is about uh, user interface. Uh, this is redirect to um, Wilson and, and Marcus. Two of you have this great user interface. Like my question is, uh, do you have strategies and how you're gonna like continue this kind of collab? Like, do you have plan for collaboration with actual UI UX folks? <laughs> or Good question. School? And Thanks. but about this point, I heard that uh, Marcus said that in Germany nobody cares about interface, <laughs> so we we found no way to collaborate. But interesting and joking. Uh, I think that's also a good way to. If we want to mainstream blockchain, I think that's the, the 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 right way to go. Okay, that's my. So perhaps we can also yeah. work in on that. Yeah. Of course. Uh, so as I mentioned before, so in the end, nobody cares about is this blockchain, is this a smart contract, is this a system nice. which helps you a little bit, make it a little bit faster, maybe more transparent. Maybe. So the the question was always, can we just use a normal database for that? Yeah. So this was the very good I, one. Yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> I always struggling sometimes. Then of course, when you're thinking about okay, we want to make it really, really trustworthy, so really secure. And then in Germany, it's maybe it's a little bit different than, than here. So of course, everybody thinks okay, we have very mm. secure systems everywhere, and it is necessary. And then always it's coming in the Bitcoin and the energy. So I'm always trying to convince, to explain it's not Bitcoin. It's not about mining. It's not about that, on, about that. And of course, it, it con consumes energy and you have to think about the transaction costs and you have to think is the, what you really want to store. So, however, it, it's, it's solvable, but uh, you need some, some kind of money for that, some kind of additional money. And then, of course, it, it must be integrated in, in the existing system. So there, therefore, we are thinking about the integration into a CDE so that you directly use this in a normal common data environment without an additional portal or uh, software. For a prototype, it's fine. But I think it's set, setting up another system and another system and you have to log in and log in there and 
So there must be more integration. I think this is a very, very good point to build up this uh, based on the CDE we already have. Yeah. There's no point to reinvent re re that wheel to develop some other things. Yeah. Very good point. Thank you. Um, I was told that this is the last question, yeah, but last still, question. <laughs> I want to give uh, some chance to uh, Perla. Okay. So, uh, uh, according to your presentation, since um, using blockchain smart contract to kill, uh, to automate some of the uh, notification or in wars and some other things. So, um, so other than that, uh, you, do you see some other uh, functionalities of a smart contract to, uh, to prevent uh, dispute? Yes. It's I just mean, you pass that you don't have no chance. There are <laughs> many, many possibilities when it comes to, when, when it could be used in project management, fiddling to, with IoT devices, and uh, it could be uh, linked with schedule, project schedule, and we could, uh, determine the critical path could be uh, determined based on suppose certain events get delayed certain activities change so when we do the delay analysis uh, sometimes a critical path changes so that itself takes a lot of time in industry to get it done so smart contracts could be used uh, in that way also uh, that such functionalities uh, but yes i mean uh, blockchain holds the potential to prevent disputes in the industry uh, it makes things more uh, transparent uh, when it comes to this and uh, trust is enabled. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all the speakers and also all the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.